Um, such tides can be a nuisance to motorists and or require a few road or partial lane closures. No significant rain is projected through mid Thursday afternoon, according to the National Weather Service Charleston. So we're in the 7 1, the 7 3 range um, throughout the remainder of the, the majority of the week, rather. So, pending your questions, that's all I have for this evening. Thank you, uh, Mr. Scaff. Any questions for Shannon? Uh, Councilmember Griffin. Yes, sir. Uh, Carolina Waste it has not been picking up bulk uh, trash uh, and yard debris, and I'm getting a lot of complaints uh, from the neighbors. That it's been a few weeks now since we've had that collected. Um, if we could maybe check with them again and see what the deal is. Um, but as of last week, they were supposed to come around and pick up. We fell behind, I believe, um, during the during the week. And we're supposed to make up for it on Saturday, and then that didn't end up happening either. So if we could follow up with them and find out what their deal is and uh, how we can help them. But uh, right now, it's just not happening. Thank you. Great. Thank you. We will um... – they're supposed to be. We'll definitely follow up and check on it. Thank you, Councilmember Griffin. Uh, Councilmember Sheely. I was just going to let you know that Carolina Waste did pick up in part of my district, at least, picked up trash. So I know they're on it. They just they haven't gotten to uh, Councilman Griffin's area, but uh, but they did pick up trash in my area. So Was that today, Councilmember Sheely? It was over this past weekend. I see. They, they picked up in District 5 today on bulk. <clears throat> So I think um, they they finally gotten the word. So so they're out there picking up. And just a reminder to everyone else, um, I'm told we did make a, a complete sweep of the peninsula last week. We started West Ashley, inner West Ashley, with our city crews uh, for this week, and then next week uh, we'll we'll have our city crews on on James Island. So uh, that's that's the way we've um, basically broken it down. But uh, Carolina and Republic ought to be good and back on schedule as of this this week. So we'll check again, but let, let me know if you, you hear any different. Okay, so any other general questions or for Mr. Scaff or just coronavirus in general? Um, hearing none, we'll proceed. Um, Really, the next order of business um, is our emergency ordinance um, that, that um, we brought forward about a week ago. It seems much longer than that ago. And we, we took a little um, time based on to defeat the virus comments as we enter a crucial um, based on our comments and uh, a discussion about this about a week ago. Um, we did um, make some um, um, some some uh, improvements to to the proposed ordinance uh, today as a result of some uh, recommendations that were made by the historic Charleston Foundation. I went over those this morning with uh, staff, and uh, so Chip McQueenie um, made some of those positive changes. Uh, this afternoon, uh, and I know we we have uh, citizens participation, and I'd like to get a report on those. But before we do, I I did want to share with y'all um, from the governor's order that he just issued um, uh, this afternoon. That's relevant to what the, this is. All we're trying to do is continue uh, the essential business of the city and, and do it in a, a responsible, uh, safe manner. Um, but anyway, the, the governor's order in section one, which is uh, all about this home or work order, the, the main body of, of his order today, says in paragraph N that this section, that is the section on home or work order, does not apply to essential or emergency meetings of state or local government bodies or gatherings of government officials or employees or other personnel that may be required in connection with the performance of emergency or essential government functions. However, to the extent possible, state or local government bodies should utilize any available technology 
or other reasonable procedures to conduct such meetings and accommodate public participation via virtual or other remote or alternate means. And, and so frankly, what we're proposing to be able to do uh, with our planning commission, BCA and these other boards is, is in fact, just what the governor is, is not just asking us to do, is ordering us to do. So um, um, that, that was the point of all, all this. And, and no one imagined really a month ago uh, or hoped that this coronavirus um, uh, crisis would not last a very long period of time. I mean, we were all hopeful at the beginning. Well, gee, just a couple of weeks of this and hopefully we'll be done, right? So um, it's, I view it just as a, um, a necessary step for us to continue to the best of our ability to conduct business, to conduct it safely, so our citizens uh, uh, won't be exposed unnecessarily, um, but to not shut down every function of government because um, you know when it's time to rebound and recover, um, the more we're able to maintain on a virtual basis, I think the better off we're gonna be. So um, with that being said, uh, Madam Clerk or either Jennifer, whoever's prepared, do y'all wanna just give us a little rundown on the public comments? I know uh, council has been copied on many of those, but um, it might be. Okay, so Mayor, I have some of the public comment. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes, yes. yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> So um, the first is a request for amendments or deferral of the amendments. And so six people requested that. Okay, they requested either additional amendments or deferral for amendments. Um, the next one, it's a large group of people and they simply said, it's 104 people and they simply said no to the ordinance as is on temporary procedures for public hearings. Okay, that's 104. And then the final batch, 26, that's yes. And we also had um, seven phone messages that were opposed. What was that number again? Seven, seven. Messages. phone messages. Oh. Awesome. Well, thank you for that report, and uh, I got many of those emails myself, as everyone did. We forward them to you all, but thank you for that summary. Do you want me to go over the number again, Mayor? No, I, I think we all heard it. Anybody okay, great. Right. All right, so um, can we, you all want to entertain a motion? Or just... I'll make a motion to move for approval, Councilman Mitchell. Second. And we got a second. All right, any uh, discussion? Mr. Mayor. I'm looking at my hand bar over here. Uh, Council Member Shade and then Jackson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And um, you know, the mayor and I had a very good heart to heart conversation last night and I've been on the phone with several other council members. And for some reason, this is one of these issues that have really sort of struck a chord with me. Um, and, and just bear with me just a, a little bit as I ramble through this. Um, city government, in my opinion, is the purest form of democracy. Um, we have citizens able to come to city council meetings, to come to board meetings, commission meetings, uh, in which they would not have the opportunity to do this if, uh, if, if there was something that issue in Columbia or Washington, DC. Um, but we are a very much responsive to our, uh, our constituents. I understand what we're trying to do here. Uh, it's important what we're, that we need to keep city government operating. It's important that we keep the wheels of government moving. And I applaud the mayor for, for pushing it. I told him that last night. If I was in his seat, I think I would be uh, very much an, an advocate for this, but I'm just coming from a different perspective. Um, I can't tell you the number of times that um, we have had issues come in front of us and before that issue is decided, we usually ask our community, um, what do you think about that? What is your feeling about that? And one of the earliest experiences I had with this <clears throat> was in front of the, the design review board. 
um, when the applicant wanted to put a 20 pump gas station at the Piggly Wiggly site, the site that we eventually uh, purchased. And that place was packed. We had uh, my two predecessors join me, uh, former council member with Paul Tinkler and Aubrey Alexander, join and attend those meetings. And I can't tell you the overwhelming citizen outpouring of opposition to, to that site being developed as a 20 pump gas station. And we defeated it. And eventually, of course, we bought the site and, and we're moving forward with that. What I'm concerned with this ordinance <clears throat> is that, number one, the question is, do we need it right now? What is in the pipeline with any, any applica applications pending before that we need to address? And two, what, what happens with this process is we are going to cut out the little guy with this. Um, because that person who needs to come in to, to express themselves needs to appear in front of that board in person. I, I get it. Virtual meetings are going to be the wave of the future. I hope at one day that as we develop our civic center at the Piggly Wiggly site, that we have the means and opportunity to create this opportunity for folks to come, if they so de desire, to stand in front of a microphone and a big screen and so all of council could see them or all of the board can see them without the necessity of coming downtown to either George Street or to, to City Hall. But we're not at that stage yet. And I'm afraid with this process, we're losing out a lot on the face-to-face, person-to-person communication that we need to have. I read most of those emails that Jennifer forwarded to us. And the one I wanted to just highlight a little bit is that came from our former planning commission chairman, mm -hmm. who uh, expressed deep opposition to this. And I, I give that a lot of weight. Unless we've got something that's just urgent, that it's just pending that we can't address, we need to address right now. Otherwise, this thing is going to be approved by default. I would suggest that we just defer this for another 30 days. Um, I think the projections on uh, this virus is, are grim. Uh, we heard from Shannon what, what we're looking at. Let's just take a pause button on this and see where we are in 30 more days. Um, this is such a drastic step that we're taking and having to cut out the little man on this thing that I'm just, uh, I'm gonna vote against it unless we can make some other changes to it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Council Member Shade, then Brady, then Waring. Wait, Jackson, you had Jackson. Jackson, I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I have um, one, one just question for clarification. Um, we received a late in the day um, mm -hmm version of an ordinance that had been uh, revised at your request um, by Mr. McQueenie. I just wanted to make sure that we're all looking at that one as we discuss it and, and decide to vote. That, that one, um, rather than make it a, a, a virtual meetings um, that would most likely take place for another 60 days, assuming that we're all, you know, still in our our social distancing and our best practices by the end of May. So that one was gonna run 60 days from passage up to 60 days. This one is ending on May 16th. So I, I guess um, I, I've gone back and forth, back and forth, as I told you directly this morning, Mr. Mayor, and I've said to many of my colleagues, I, uh, I, I'm sorry that we haven't been able to get some sort of better understanding um, of, of the um, um, submissions or pending applications that might be the most um, compelling reason as Council Member Shade is talking about of not wanting to harm um, an applicant that, that would, would be better served by being in front of a board. I guess over the last you know, few days, I've sort of been taking the other approach. I first, put forward the idea of trying to sort this out by saying we could pretty easily um, virtually review the small, the small parcel, um, BAR small and the BZA site design in particular, and some of the other what very small individual properties. My experience is that those are the people that might be the most harmed by making a delay because they've got a thin budget. Um, they're trying to accomplish something that is very 
uh, dynamic. I'm thinking of my own son-in-law that I've told you all about trying to open up um, his soft serve one of a kind ice cream spot on, on Route 61. And um, thankfully he's already gotten through his entitlements which took way too long and that's another story. But in terms of having the wherewithal, he's got a bridge loan from his commercial lender. He's got a contractor crew that's lined up and working, you know, every day. And those are the, those are the owner property owners that I think we should be the most um, compelled by. The larger developers, I mean, no one has been able to say uh, who might be submitting an application in even the next 60 days that would require an extensive review period, like a planned unit development or some major subdivision that's going to be coming um, into, into the public scrutiny as it should. So I, I, um, I'm actually prepared to vote yes tonight because I want to keep the business community, the, um, the underbelly of the developer community, the architects, the engineers, the contractors, the surveyors, all of those people are actually now working and I don't want to see them have to stop. But if we're only talking about this until May 16th, I'm sort of like, what's the big deal again? I, I just saw that um, point of information, you know, an hour ago, and it's taking me by surprise that now we're talking about not being able to have a public hearing for the next 14 days, because we have to have the public notice period. So April 21st, starting tomorrow, would be the first that we could schedule a public hearing type meeting. And the planning commission was scheduled to meet on April 29th. So that's one planning commission. There's very little that I see on their agenda because Laurel Island has volunteered not to come forward to the planning commission until a lot of this virus um, uh, crisis is, is behind us. So it could be months before Laurel Island will come. And then by the time of a, of a May public uh, planning commission meeting, this whole thing is, is, is ended on May 16th. So we would all have one planning commission meeting that everyone would have to gear up to support technologically and figure out how to be a you know, vibrant participant as we appreciate from our public members. So I'm, I'm sort of like back on the fence again. I really don't understand why we're twisting ourselves into a pretzel tonight if all we're talking about is a May 16th uh, termination date. But if we're talking about maybe this will just be the first of several extensions, then I don't want to hurt the business community. So I would really like to have some sort of truth telling. What are we looking at? Who's coming in the pipeline? I know we can't divulge confidential information, but we need a sense that we're doing something of value for the community on both sides. I'm sorry. Oh. To on. Thank you very much. So thank you, Council Member Jackson, and, and I might ask um, Mr. Lindsay to address the applications in a few minutes. I would like to go ahead, if y'all don't mind, and address the issue of the date. And uh, that uh, was one of the recommendations of the foundation that the timeline be pretty tight on this. And um, so as last week, you know, we um, redid our emergency ordinance on our stay at home ordinance. And we, we synced it with the original emergency ordinance of the city. Yes, we have the right to make this a 60 day period, but I just thought we were at the point with all these different measures that we've been considering that we would synchronize them all on the same date as the original emergency uh, declaration, which was 60 days from March the 16th and would end on uh, May 16th. And, and hopefully I pray that 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 will be the end of all our emergency ordinances um, come May the 16th. But if we have to start um, extending them, at least we'll have them all synchronized on the same same date. We won't have to be thinking about, well, the stay at home uh, expires this date and then the, the meetings just expires on another. So that, that's why I, I ask that we put that at May 16th, just to make everything uh, consistent. Council member uh, Brady. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just think we need to lay out for the public um, that we're between a rock and a hard place to to use the metaphor, um, because 
as you mentioned in the governor's executive order, we're effectively being ordered to continue uh, this type of quote unquote business as usual approach. Um, but then also, and Councilmember Appel uh, mentioned it in his uh, great op-ed that he did in the Post and Courier, um, but there's a matter of law as well uh, that our timelines are enshrined um, in state law that um, I'm a fan of saying lack of action in and of itself is an action. And in this instance, uh, if we kick the can down the road or decide not to pass this, uh, the lack of action will result in approvals that we may otherwise not uh, what that we that we may not otherwise want um, because then they would go without any public input. Um, and so I think you know this is one of those kind of situations where I think people need and and the public needs to be aware that uh, a lot of this decision making is is out of our hands and we're being presented with uh, the least bad option to do what we know is in the best interest of the public. Um, and, and to try and do that. And I think uh, the ordinance as it's, as it's been amended and presented um, will allow for as much input as we can possibly get um, given these type of timeframes. Uh, and, and I just, you know, I'm not a lawyer, um, but the, the only hesitation that I have is that we may, uh, when we have another state of emergency or a hurricane or anything else is coming, um, I just wanna make sure we're not lining ourselves up for if there's a mandatory evacuation and we just get to keep proceeding as business as usual. Um, and so it, just to make sure that we're firm that uh, this is for the current pandemic um, and that you know we don't necessarily need to revisit this approach later on. So I appreciate you calling on me, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Points well taken. Council Member Waring. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I agree with uh, Councilman uh, Brady. Uh, you say we're between a rock and a hard place. I agree with that, but we have to and, and, and agree with the law. Um, but I had a question of Councilman um, Sheed in that if we apply the same the same standards that you're applying to uh, the let's say the zoning board uh, commission, suppose those same standards were applied to us and said that uh, the same things they're saying. Many are saying lack of transparency. Would that mean if those same standards were applied to the mayor and city council, we couldn't meet because certain people doesn't have a, a computer and the like? Now, let me tell you, the, the position I come from, I come from a group of people that at one time couldn't even come in city hall. So I believe in transparency. Believe me, I believe in, in uh, the public input. But given a situation that the world um, had, had nothing to do with and certainly um, the world, and certainly our country, is trying to find a way to cope with it and deliver services to people that really do not need those services. Um, I think we have to try to find a way to stay open, if you will, for business. Now, it's amazing. Um, I know a lot of you all did, because I did as well. I know I've been reading more emails, probably, than I have when doing normal times. So the electronic mail is getting through. The people who are against this thing certainly uh, are being heard. Um, but there's also a technique that can be used um, on the planning board. For example, let's say uh, a developer, and I'm going to get that all-encompassing greedy developer that's trying to push something through when somebody's not looking. Okay, and certainly this would be the appropriate time. You know, the, the, the planning commission and these boards are very powerful. You know, they can also can communicate, and certainly our staff can, to have hopefully have that uh, person withdraw. And if they don't withdraw, then you can. Uh, and I have a couple lawyers on here. I'm a layman. Then you can vote against. Uh, is it with prejudice or without prejudice, counselors? that will enable the uh, applicant to bring it back in less than a uh, year's time. So there are ways to communicate to the applicant, that applicant that's trying to ram something through because they have the so-called 60-day deemed approved uh, provision in there, that remember these boards and commissions and our staff are not unequipped with the technique, if you will, to handle that. So, um, and to, to, to those that may think, okay, 
and, and I know, Ms. Jackson, you, Council Leader Jackson, you're saying that with the best of intentions, and I hear you. But when I listen to some of these um, uh, infectious disease experts, some of them are talking about there may be a possible second round of this in the fall. So when the fall of the year comes or the winter of the year comes, if God forbid if, if we have a second round of this virus, you know, hitting the world and the country again, does that mean um, we don't do anything from now until until this uh, virus is uh, solved with uh, uh, with medication or vaccinations, et cetera? So I, you know, I really do believe we have to move forward with this. And Mr. Mayor, I appreciate your leadership on this. I appreciate you reaching out because I read the op-ed piece with um, in the paper that uh, Historic Charleston and Preservation Society. I believe me, I. I support those people when they talk to, when they talk about transparency, and I know they're very sincere about that. But in the meantime, um, there is a way we can do that because it, it may not be the best, but the public can be heard on this one, and in my opinion, has been heard on both sides of this issue. And I'm sure we'll continue to hear from them, even to the point to where we have red line versions of this ordinance incorporating some of the uh, best suggestions that's been offered to us. So I am going to support it, um, but please think in terms of uh, it's just not the developer that has power in this. Our boards and commissions also have power in this to communicate that if they need more time on this and they don't want to, and those applicants don't want to uh, defer, then obviously they can be voted uh, and denied, and if it's denied, it's going to take a long time before they can bring it back. Certainly, if it, it's um, denied, um, and counselors help me out, is it with prejudice or without prejudice? But um, there's one of them that allows them to come and bring it back, especially if they're prejudice. working with staff. So, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Mayor. But I'm going to support thank the measure. You. Thank you, Councilmember Ware and Councilmember Appel. All right, I, I don't really have a strong opinion on this one way or the other. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, I think this is an extremely, I think this is an extremely important issue. I'm not going to belabor it. I think I've spoken with about everybody on council about this. This is the definition of a dilemma. It's not as if we all sat around and thought to ourselves, gee, how can we find a way to uh, exclude uh, public gatherings at these quasi-judicial hearings? That is, a, that is a problem that has been foisted upon us. We're all trying to deal with this uh, horrible situation, um, and there's no instruction manual for how to do this. I got an email this morning. I'm on a lot of the local government uh, listservs. The town of Kiowa is having virtual meetings. Their next planning commission meeting is going to be held by, by virtual means. If the town of Kiowa can do it, the city of Charleston can do it. And let me tell you, I've represented folks before the boards out at Kiowa before. They are extremely passionate out there just as much as, as our citizenry is in the city of Charleston. We have the technology, we have the means, we're doing it right now. We are literally doing what we're proposing right now. How can we tell an applicant that we don't have the methodology and the means to do this? We're not this, the town of Aner, South Carolina. This isn't McCormick County. This is the number one city in, in, in the state of South Carolina. We have the ability to do this. We can do it. And here's the, here's the positives. This will be the largest expansion of public participation ever. I served on the BZA for years. Guess who didn't show up at BZA meetings? People from council member Jack, um, uh, uh, Griffin's district, folks from West Ashley, James Island, Daniel Island, it's been difficult to date to participate from the public. Who's gonna drive down downtown Charleston at five o'clock, find parking, sit in a meeting that lasts for several hours? This is an opportunity. This is a blessing in disguise uh, in a lot of ways. Um, all the organizations that have voiced um, concerns about this process and they're legitimate concerns. This is a new um, frontier that we're embarking on. Uh, I think the city has done a fantastic job of um, further clarifying how this process is going to work. Uh, Mayor Tecklenburg had an incredible idea for uh, actually facilitating in-person participation outside of 2 George Street. We're, we're opening up the bag in terms of options. 
all the organizations are going to have the ability to opine and comment and participate as fully as they have, uh, you know, from day one. Council Member Waring raised an incredibly important point. These board members on the Planning Commission, the BZA, these are serious people that take their job extremely seriously. The idea that some half-cocked development is going to sort of slide under the radar here um, is just not is just not true. It's not going to happen. Um, Lenny Krawcheck at the BZA is not going to let that happen. Donna Jacobs at the Planning Commission is not going to let that happen. Our city staff is not going to let that happen. Um, and and it's my hope that um, we open up a new era of public participation on this issue. And we're going to need more public participation as we move forward, as we move forward with our comprehensive plan update, as we move forward with uh, the West Asher Revitalization Commission, as we move forward with getting the city of Charleston up off the mat over the next, not several months, several years potentially, when all is said and done after this thing. So let's focus on the positives about this. Again, this is not something that, that we are doing um, uh, for, uh, for any other reason than we are faced with a very difficult dilemma that has become more pressing as of 30 minutes ago when, when the governor's latest order came in. I think um, it, it's very clear. We, we, are, we are being ordered to continue these meetings and we're doing it in a way that balances the public's uh, right and, and, and the important role of the public in this process. So I'm fully supportive of this. I, I like the amendments that have been incorporated in this ordinance. I think the Historic Charleston Foundation is to be applauded for, for being a constructive um, partner in this and helping us work and, and get this ordinance right. The ordinance itself envisions and incorporates further modifications as we test this, as we work through these um, functions. So um, I, I think uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a necessary um, uh, action and, and um, I will be fully supporting it tonight and I, and I um, uh, fully uh, ask uh, uh, my colleagues to join with me on that. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Appel. Council Member Mitchell. Yes, Mr. Mayor. First, I would like to thank the staff, you and the staff, and everything you're doing, what you're doing, and trying to, so we can be uh, transparent on this. We have talked about this many times, trying to find a way to have the uh, public to participate. And it was thrown around, but you know, we have this virus that's going around that we can't, we can't congregate together, but then we can try some other solutions. We are the number one city in South Carolina. So being number one city in South Carolina, then we have to take some challenge, uh, move on. We're gonna have some challenges, but we have to move on to keep things moving. A lot of people, a lot of the citizens wanted to have a chance to participate and voice their opinion. And that's what we were talking about. And that's why we are doing this and trying to be transparent so people would have an opportunity to be able to say something. So I believe, you know, that we are doing the right thing. I know a lot of people are not going to understand it, but we have to do something. And I think this is the best way to do it as we are doing right now, being on virtual, so far as the council members are doing. So giving them the opportunity to be able to uh, voice their opinion and have the staff and the planning commission and the BR to be able to hear them. I think this is gonna be, I think it's gonna work out fine. I think people are just afraid of something that they never have, never have been involved in before and which we have never been involved in this before, but we have to find solutions as we go along. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna support it, you know, and I, I feel that in the long run, they will understand. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. So could I call on uh, Mr. Lindsay Jacob to, to give us a summary of um, the meetings that have been canceled and what's what what's kind of on the horizon here? And note again, as um, Councilmember Jackson did, that the Laurel Island development, as far as I'm know, it's the biggest thing out there that was on the drawing board, has been mm -hmm. deferred been deferred by the applicant as has been a development that um, is contemplated for 295 Calhoun Street. That's also been deferred by the applicant as well. Mr. Lindsay. Mr. Mayor. Y yes, sir. Council I, Member. I had my hand up. Before Mr. Lindsay speaks, can I just say a few things? Because it's going to incorporate, I think, what he's about to oh, tell I'm us. Sorry, I didn't, 
I Thank didn't you. See um, so on. one of the things, and there's been a lot of great points made in all this, and I do think it's a difficult decision. And I think Mr. Lindsay is gonna to speak to what I'm sort of interested in hearing about, but the, the one portion of this ordinance that I am interested in hearing from both Mr. Lindsay and you, Mr. Mayor, is the emergency part of it. Do we have to get this through right now? Is there something that's going to happen sometime soon that is going to be detrimental to the public process, to the manner in which we do business in the city? And can we go through this in a more reasoned way with more input? I mean, the final version of this ordinance hit our computers an hour ago. There are a number of people who have given public input, haven't even seen it yet. And again, I'm interested in, Mr. Lindsay, I think is gonna address this. Is this an emergency or can we go through this in a way where we get more input from it? We see where this is all going without either detriment to the city of having any applications go through that don't get heard or stop slowing the process down. So um, I think that's something that we should consider before we go and vote on an emergency um, ordinance. Well, thank you, sir. We did bring it to y'all uh, a week ago. Maybe it was over a week ago. So we deferred it just for that purpose so that you'd have some more time to consider it. Um, admittedly, the recommendations from the foundation came to us late last week. So uh, we thought they were good ideas. And, um, and, and so anyway, that's, that explains the timing of it. Uh, Mr. Lindsay, do you wanna address uh, uh, what's on the horizon, so to speak, with, with some of these meetings? Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of council. Um, just to run through the numbers very briefly here, we have 37 agenda items that were already advertised on formal meetings that have been canceled. And that is in five different meetings, uh, DRB, BZA, Planning Commission, um, and the BZA uh, SD. We also have um, seven upcoming meetings that are likely to be canceled um, if, if no action is taken. Those include the BARs, the Design Review Board, um, Board of Zoning Appeals and Planning Commission. And we have received a total of 30 applications um, that have not yet been added to agendas and that are just sort of docked right now. So that would be a total of 67 um, various items which have either been, have been delayed or will be delayed as a result of, of being stalled out. Um, that includes, as you are aware, Mr. Mayor, um, some number of hundreds of units of affordable housing. So in terms of the, um, the, the automatic approval issues, um, you were correct, Mr. Mayor, that 295 Calhoun and Laurel Island have both been deferred uh, by the applicant uh, as a result of the current conditions, and uh, those will not be moving forward at this time. Last thing I will say to address council members seeking questions. We are concerned that any processes that we adopt have complete integrity and are in fact totally transparent. It's not to our advantage to adopt processes that could be challenged in the future or that would be in any way unfair to the applicant or the public. Um, total transparency is our goal. So if we do move forward with this, we would have, um, we would seek to have practice runs. We would hope that we can cover every, every single base so that we do know how these meetings should go to ensure total participation by everyone who should be in the meeting just as we could, if not better than if we were in person. So our goal would not be to, um, to roll this out immediately, but it would be to take our time and make sure that we're doing everything the right way according to due process and ensuring total uh, participation. And, and Mr. McQueenie, could I call on you just to share um, uh, a summary of, of the, um, changes that we made today as a result of our conversation and the input from the foundation. Yes, sir, I'm happy to. And somebody said they received it an hour ago and that's because it got better uh, compared and reacted to public comments that I got really up to today. Um, I don't know why the person did not mention that as part of the reason that they got it an hour ago, but that's fine. Um, anyway, the changes are, <clears throat> First, to um, change the date uh, from June 5th, the termination date from June 5th back to May 16th to match the previous ordinances. Uh, that's a change to the title of the ordinance. Secondly, to incorporate the um, uh, um, changes made by the, or excuse me, the comments made by the Department of Commerce, which were received on Friday and Sunday uh, as well, excuse me, Friday and today um, about 
the requirements for whole, using remote communication technology, et cetera. Um, the next one is, um, and I want to be very above board about this. I changed it from virtual attendance to um, alter, alternate attendance. It's not to try to make it look like it's not virtual anymore. Uh, that's kind of me being a lawyer because we're, we're setting up a process to take uh, comments at public meetings uh, or at the uh, Yale Yard or some other alternative location for those without means to access it. I will say when I originally drafted this, um, I did think hard about the public participation issue. I, I wanted to set up a process where there would be no scenario where you'd have just the applicant in the room with the board members or planning commission members and the public calling in. So I, I wrote it so that everyone would have to appear virtually. That's, that's pretty much still the case, except that people uh, who lack the means can show up uh, to a location to, to speak to it. And, and that also went to sort of social justice issues for larger developers that were easier, it, it'd be easier to appear in person for smaller developers who maybe can't afford it, um, they may have had to call in. So I wanted to make it, you know, to the extent it's a disadvantage not to see and hear the witnesses in person. I want it to be a shared disadvantage among everyone. Um, so the uh, next change is the incorporation of guidelines. There's a minimum um, social distancing requirement, uh, excuse me, a, a, a minimum, um, uh, requirement for uh, the city to implement these sort of the ability for the uh, public to participate, um, including a, a new provision that we would provide a computer with a camera with a link to the virtual meeting at a location to be advertised. That is most likely going to be the Gill Yard. We'd implement social distancing techniques on that. Um, and uh, the guidelines would be sort of what is going to be implemented now to more specifically to implement this virtual process. Um, and it would be, I did add a provision because I think we're gonna need some administrative flexibility on that. For instance, you know, if Zoom, part of the guidelines is to do trial runs. If Zoom for whatever reason is not the system that, that's working, we need the ability to change that. I put in there um, that the mayor would have the ability to approve changes on recommendation by Planning or the uh, by really Jacob and uh, upon approval by uh, Corporation Council. Um, so uh, the next change is uh, I took out the 24 hours in advance for changing the Zoom requirements, which was something requested by Historic Charleston Foundation, and many of these were uh, su suggested. Um, I also in section. 54-132-E um, took out the five days in advance requirement. I think that was uh, to have exhibits posted uh, by anyone by that time so staff could actually process them and get them posted. Um, I took that out that requirement um, because I think staff felt like they could do it um, better than that. The submission requirements um, were changed to require everything to be submitted by the city or the applicant uh, within uh, to be posted seven days, at least seven days in advance. I think HCF had requested 10 days. We talked to staff and we felt like seven days was a, a good time for staff to be able to react and post those things in advance and still meet the hearing requirements. Um, I would note as a legal matter, other parties and the applicant uh, in reply to other parties will also need the ability to submit. They'll be able to submit at the hearing and, and the applicant would need the ability to respond to whatever submitted the hearing. So I can't really, I can't tie the applicant's hands that much. I don't think we can. Um, so the um, guidelines are 54, 134 and they're attached as an exhibit one. Um, and I can let Jacob go into more, more details about those, but it's, um, you know, it, it, it sets forth what we're looking at doing as far as the Zoom type meeting uh, that will have trial runs on it, that everybody's gonna be able to see exhibits and how we're going to accomplish that, not just the, um, the uh, minimum requirements that are in the ordinance. Uh, and again, the mayor can approve changes. Early termination, um, I, I wrote this originally, uh, this is 54135, I wrote this originally so that everything would terminate on June 5th. Uh, I also wanted to give 
so that city council doesn't have to adopt another quote unquote emergency ordinance, the ability for them to give it a look back um, at, for hearings noticed on or after May 1st, 2020, they could by majority vote, uh, rescind it if the circumstances warrant and by emergency ordinance, you could also rescind it mostly because I don't know what's gonna happen in the next 30 days. I'm sure everybody wants would, would want this rescinded as soon as possible when things get back to normal. Um, and then the, the expira expiration date is reiterated. Are there any questions on that? <laughs> any questions for uh, Mr. McQueenie? Sorry, I could only get this to you an hour in advance. All right. So um, but anybody who hadn't spoken wanted to be heard? Yeah, Mr. Mayor, this is Dudley. Yeah. Gregory. Council Member Gregory. Yeah, I just had one question. I know we're talking about the Planning Commission and we're talking about the BAR, but there are a number are of other meetings that residents attend while they may not be able to participate. And the one that comes to mind is the TRC meeting. Uh, will the TRC meetings be um, virtual? at a minimum, at least having the uh, public to be able to view them? Yes, sir. We, we discussed this the other day, and even though the TRC is a staff meeting only, um, apparently they are, um, there's some level of notice and, and someone from the public can attend. And so we're gonna continue to, um, to make the TRC meetings known. And if somebody wants to call in or Zoom in, uh, they would be able to, to listen in as, as is allowed now. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Anyone else? I, Mayor. Council Member Shade and then Jackson again. Uh, and this is uh, a question for Jacob. I just want to get clarification first. Of, of the 67 cases are those pending right now jacob um well it, can you clarify that sure. for more yes absolutely so the 30 the first that i listed were items that had already been added to published agendas but the meetings have been canceled as a result of our distancing rules so those items are already on the books and they are awaiting the next meeting the additional ones the, uh, the additional 37 are applications that we have received but have not yet been added to an agenda because we are in a holding pattern with our meetings so all of those applications have been received as as we are obligated to do to receive those applications and they are awaiting processing as soon as we can move forward with meetings so the, the number is 30 30 that, that 30 that were published and added to agendas 37 that have been received but not yet added to an agenda and, and if we don't act on those 30, those are the ones that would have automatic approval? Um, negative on that. So okay, to- A little bit more then. Yes, so to go back on this, um, we have, and I'll go through the numbers here on the design review board. We have three items. These are from the, the first batch. These are, um, these are those that have been uh, that have been advertised but canceled. Three items from the design review board, eleven from the BZAZ, nine from the planning commission, and six from the BZA SD for April first. Eight for the BZA uh, zoning April seventh. That's thirty-seven in total. So that's the that's um not thirty but thirty-seven. So of those, this is important, um, and I want to make sure that. Also, Mr. McQueen is listening in here. The automatic approval and, and disapproval provisions are only in effect for planning commission subdivisions, which receive an automatic 60-day approval. And my staff staff show me that show uh, by our agendas that none of those are pending automatic approval at the moment. And we have one item which theoretically could be approved automatically coming from planning commission to council in which there is a 30 day clock for council to act. And that is 1144 Folly Road, which has a rezoning to the Folly Road overlay, which is a, a non-controversial minor item. Um, that is the one item that all of my staff have viewed uh, related to planning commission and your actions that could potentially be triggered with the automatic approval. I will also say that um, we do have an automatic disapproval in effect for all BAR items per our own agenda, our own ordinances. 
and we have received a total of five applications to the BARL and a total of 16 applications to the BARS. Those items are pending automatic disapproval within 45 days of their receipt. Those have not yet been added to an agenda, but the clock would be ticking on them. And those are the only ones that we have that, pen, that are uh, pending for automatic approval or disapproval. All right, Council Member Jackson. Can I finish my, my other point, Mayor? I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't know there was another one, but please, I, yes, I, sir. I, thank you. So just, just to be clear, we, there's, there's no cases in the pipeline that are in threat of automatic approval without public input. There may be some cases that may have an automatic disapproval unless city council meets. Am I understanding that correctly? There is one. There is one item which could potentially be automatically approved, and that is 1144 Folly Road, which is a rezoning to the Folly Road overlay. Okay. Mayor, the other the other point I want to make is is this. Um, is this the third point now? No, I, I I just want to get clarification from Mr. Lindsay as to what was in danger because we. We, we've categorized this as being a, a dilemma and a rock and a hard uh, point. And unless we've got something that's just pending, it has to be acted upon. And it sounds like the 1144 Folly Road and the other one deals with what is before city council to approve and not to approve. But this is the other thing I just want to emphasize that I'm, I'm trying to uh, um, convey to the rest of my colleagues. The number of these cases that we have we go back to our neighborhood associations. We go back to our citizens and find out from them, what is your feeling about this? How is this going to impact your neighborhood? And, and the number of times that we've asked for that input, we can't get that now. Because unless we extend this to our neighborhood associations and give them the ability to have these meetings, how are we going to gauge what is the citizen input on from the neighborhood associations? We, we, we've got... And a, a perfect example came up with in my district with in Magnolia, in which someone came to me and, 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 and floated an idea that needed to go through the design review board at some particular point. And I asked them, well, have you gone to the neighborhood association? And they hadn't. So I said, you, you need to go to the neighborhood association. I want to see what their, their feeling is on that. Now, I'm going to do, I have a monthly coffee and conversation that I, that I organize. I'm gonna do it this coming Saturday through the process we're doing right now. And I've advertised that to my community. I'm looking to see how that, that works out. But I don't know how other neighborhood associations are going to be able to have the ability to offer input on things that are going to directly impact them if they don't have this capability. And maybe we can help them with that, but I mean, how many times have we as council members gone to our neighborhoods and asked them, what is y'all's input on this particular project? We cut it out that whole process. And that's a little guy I'm trying to, to, to describe to us that we've got to take in consideration as to our individual communities, our individual citizens, their input on, on uh, receiving from them how they feel about this particular project. That's what I'm worried about. And I don't know how we're going to address that. Well, well, I hear you, but I mean, our protocol will not change. We'll still email everybody on the email list about every meeting notice. Um, we'll, we'll publicize it in the paper as we normally do. All the information will be available a week online prior to the meeting. People will be able to call in. They'll be able to Zoom in if, if uh, we're successful setting up this remote station. If they don't have a computer, they could even come and use one of our computers so that they can participate. And so that's how we're going to do it. We're going to uh, have all the above. They'll be able to call us, email us, uh, Zoom, be present during the live meeting. They'll be able to come to the gear yard if, if, if they don't have a computer. Frankly, I would predict the meetings are going to be very long because more people will be able to participate in a way than uh, have been before. And once again, I'm gonna make this statement. When we come out of this coronavirus, uh, I wanna keep some of these virtual means of our citizens participating active that we currently don't do 
so that uh, there'll be even more robust uh, communication from our citizens. So admittedly, we got this period of time right now, folks, where we're, we, we got a global coronavirus uh, pandemic. We got a governor who's, uh, who's rightfully uh, asked everyone to either stay at home or go to work and to conduct essential business in a, in a fashion like we're proposing to do here. So, um, you know, I just feel like it's the right thing for us to do in order to move forward and, and keep the business of the city alive, but allow our citizens to participate and even increase the ability for them to participate long-term. Any further comments before- Mr. I respond Mayor. To the question? Council Member Jackson, then CK. <laughs> Thank you. I I, um, I really appreciate um, you, you asking uh, Mr. Lindsay to go into more detail. That, that is a question that I've been trying to ask um, because I, I think it, it, it gives us and, and hopefully uh, the citizens who are listening right now and the um, advocacy groups who are on with us a, a level of um, comfort to know that we're really not going to be uh, taking in the most complex and the hardest to um, review projects. And, and I, I guess I came into this meeting before I knew that we'd shorten the deadline and that still is confusing to me. Um, but I came into this meeting feeling that as long as we knew that we were helping out the small property owners to the extent that they needed to be going through the process pipeline, that is, that is really their, their bread and butter um, as, as individual owners, for whatever reasons they're asking us to look at changes to their property. So for example, I, I know the 1144 Folly Road, it's, it's one of the few commercial properties that has come into our um, arena in my district. And basically it's one of the original residential properties on the corner of Folly Road. It's been a it was a county property. And while it was a county property, it's been used as a nationwide insurance office for as long as anybody can remember as a, as a commercial residential office. And when it came into the county, for whatever reason, the city didn't change our zoning. So it was in the county and residential, but grandfathered in as a commercial use. And now it's in the city and we've never changed the zoning. So the property owner's trying to sell He's got a buyer. He needs to have a residential office, you know, zone. So I think that's a really good case for us to take some comfort that we're not going to be um, trying to take on more than we can handle in the short term that this is going to be in effect. And my further um, thought about that, that I talked to you about this morning, Mayor, is if our planning staff does find out that there are proposals in the works that are would be the normal um, type of subdivision um, or a planned unit development or any other kind of zoning. The only one that doesn't end up at council are the subdivisions who are in a by right zoning district and all they're doing is going for a concept development plan and then to the planning commission for a subdivision approval. And those are the ones that are the least out of the public realm because most of the concept approval um, work has done is done at the staff level. And then the staff level delivers that package as a checklist that they've met all of the requirements for a concept approval. And, this, and the planning commission sits there and says, okay, the checklist is complete and we have to give it a subdivision approval. That's a broken process already, I think. But if there's none like that in our, in our horizon and we can promise each other and the planning staff will go to you, Mayor, and say a subdivision um, is coming up, up on our radar and we can ask that owner and that developer to take a pass and wait until this is all over and we can get back into the public realm, I think we'll be fine of being able to process what's in the pipeline for the smaller owners who need to get their, their work done so that we can continue to have a robust land use and building industry in the time when we have a very 
un, un, um, healthy uh, hospitality industry and the other things that are residual to shipping and all the other you know problems that have evolved uh, with this virus season. The building industry is able to chug along as long as there are social distancing safe practice. And I do think that we should support that industry to be healthy. They are the customers who are ordering carry out food from the restaurants and eating their sandwiches at the at the sub shop and you know basically paying their bills because they're making money. And I don't think we want to stop that as an economy. So I'm going to vote yes, but I do feel like we need to have sort of an honor system that if anything complex comes down the pike, we will do our best to ask that owner as a gracious civic um, uh, gesture that they just not get into the system where they would press any sort of timeline envelope. All right. Thank you very much. And I think that's a point well taken. And that's exactly what happened, for example, with the Laurel Island folks. Correct. Um, so uh, I think, you know, the thoughtful um, applicants, you know, uh, welcome that public input and process and, and, um, and, and the boards and commissions, as, as Council Member Waring noted, will, uh, will, will serve that purpose as well. Council member seekings, and then I'd like to call the question. You're on mute. Hang on, thank you, Mr. Mayor. A um, Couple of brief points, I have a question. I agree with you and what a lot of people said tonight and that on the other side of this expanded public participation through electronic means is gonna be an incredible tool that we'll be able to use. We're now in a position now though that we've been forced into where if we go forward with this, it's gonna be mandated, not voluntary. So just something to think about. Um, and Council Member Shade makes a good point too, and that is a lot of these processes and applications don't get to a board commission or city council until they've gone through numerous discussions with homeowners associations, civic groups and the like. There's lots of examples out there, so we should be mindful about that. There's, I mean, plenty in my district and all over the place. My question is this, specific to the planning commission, what act activity triggers the 60 day period? When is it that the 60 day period begins that we then have to have action taken or else whatever comes into the pipeline is approved? Mr. McQueenie? Yes, and that is, that's a big debate between municipal attorneys and developers attorneys. It has been the city's position and will continue to be the city's position that until we have a hearing before planning commission and the application goes before planning commission, that 60 day deadline does not run. There are no cases, there's no attorney general's opinions addressing this issue. Um, I think it's the right decision. I think if you can't have a public hearing that the 60 days should not start running, but I can't tell you under existing case law or attorney general's opinions or, or anything like that, how a court's gonna, gonna come out. I think this period right now would be a good time <laughs> for us to, to deal with that issue. But um, I'm at this point, I'm really a lot more concerned about the DOC and governor's orders. Um, and I, it's been my interpretation for, for a little while, but um, they've really kind of set up this, um, you can't have gatherings of more than 50 essential services. DOC will decide what's or non-essential and they can consult with the AG. They did that. They said we were essential or they, were, they said we were not non-essential. I asked for clarification. I explained these are a lot of these boards are adjudicatory bodies and require submission of evidence, et cetera. And they came back with, here's the Supreme Court guidelines. In essence, they require remote uh, participation unless there's an emergency and you should follow these guidelines. Right. So I think one of the things that in times like this, and I know we all have a lot on our plate and I understand your frustrations with some of this too. It's probably a good time to go and ask that question. So we actually know it for ourselves and anybody else, because again, there is no opinion on it out there. So I think it's uh, something we probably need to know. Mr. Lindsay, you wanted to add one comment? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just as a quick point of clarification, the 60 day clock only applies to subdivisions. It does right. not apply to zonings of use, zonings of height. It doesn't apply to conference of plan amendments or any of the other things that the planning commission does, only subdivisions of land. Right. All right, all in favor of the motion as amended, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
Nay. Nay. That's um, Shane. You, you want me to call the roll? Shane and uh, Seekings. Shane and Seekings. <laughs> and this, this is for approval of the amended one, correct? Correct. correct. In opposition were Shade, Del Chapo, and Seekings. The motion passes. Okay. So thank you all for your intense um, interest and concern for uh, participation, Councilmember Waring. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to thank uh, our legal department and, and Mr. McQueen on that. I mean, you know, you, you apologize, Mr. McQueen, for getting it to us late, but you kept us informed every step of the way when you sent the initial, initial ordinance and when that was changed, and certainly as information came down from Columbia and um, and wanted to incorporate some of the things from historic Charleston. I mean, you kept us current all along the way. So um, that was, I mean, I that was know, great I, work. I, I didn't mean to lose my temper. I just didn't want, right now, people don't know who to believe. And I'm trying to keep a clear record. I'm trying to be as above board as possible. And, yeah. and that that was why I said what I said. And I apologize because I shouldn't. I need to apologize. That was good work. Thank you. And yeah. Ditto, all you right. did a good job under tough circumstances. Um, so, mm -hmm. so we all are. Great. Yeah. Great job, beep, Chip. Beep, beep, Sam. Mm -hmm. Oh, I hear that every now and again. Oh, oh, I'm all right. Um, we're just going to meet uh, Wednesday and Friday this week, not every day. So, uh, unless there's further business, we stand adjourned until Wednesday at 5 30. Thank you, Mr. Thank you Thank all. You. God bless. God bless.